14 rigid body dynamics. The key point is the calculation of total kinetic energy of a system of particles. In a system of particles, uh, it is always expressed as a, a sum. Some of these are two contributions, and the first term is the kinetic energy of a single particle that has the total mass the same as the system. These are mi's where i runs from 1 to n. The total mass is a capture m. We know how to compute the center of mass of the whole system. Center of mass, center of mass is mi xi sum over i divided by capital M. This is the center of mass. And center of mass velocity square, one half mv squared. This is a point particle. It's just like a point particle in which all of the masses, all of the masses are concentrated at the point where the center of mass is placed. Plus, relative motion of these uh, all participants of the system relative to the center of mass. We have xi bar, that is the xi position subtracted by the position of the center of mass. So if there is a no relative motion with respect to the center of mass, this second term disappears. On the other hand, if we choose the center of mass frame, where the center of mass is fixed, therefore the velocity of the center of mass vanishes. In that case, in the center of mass frame, this first term vanishes. In addition, if the system of particles is they, they construct a, a kind of rigid body. A rigid body, they have uh, the, any two points of a rigid body has the fixed relative position. That means the shape. Shape doesn't change. In that case, the, we can define the rotational inertia, rotational inertia, as the sum of mi x per x per is the axis passing the center this is a, there's a center of mass an axis and that is a passing a center of mass and x per i is the perpendicular distance to a point in a rigid body relative to the axis of rotation. In that case, this one can be changed, expressed in terms of uh, integral when the mass distribution is continuous. So this one, this one, they are the same as the rotation inertia about an axis that is passing through the center of mass. Okay, then this uh, internal kinetic energy can always expressed in terms of one half i theta dot squared. Theta dot means the angular velocity with respect to the axis of rotation. I told you yes uh, in the previous class the angular momentum orbital angular momentum can be expressed as ICM theta dot. So this one is can be expressed as orbital angular momentum square divided by two ICM. Yes. In the previous class, we learned how to compute the rotation of inertia with respect to the center of mass or with respect to the 
axis, there is a CM. So if I compute the rotational inertia about this axis, then it should be ICM. And another axis that is a parallel, parallel, but perpendicular with the perpendicular distance uh, H, then we can make use of parallel axis theorem to express I prime as the sum of ICM times M H squared. This is called the parallel axis theorem. Anyway, you uh, the all of the formulas that, that we need are derived explicitly by integration. So you have to memorize the answers. For example, what is the rotational inertia about uh, this, this axis or this axis or this axis? What is the rotational inertia of the disk about this axis, this axis, this axis? You have to remember the answer and how, you have to remember how to derive those values by integration. Now, let us make use of those results. If I choose the axis of rotation that is a perpendicular to a hoop, hoop, hula hoop, you know what hula hoop is. It is empty and it's just like this a thin pipe. So we, we ignore the, the thickness of this thin pipe then the, from the axis of rotation, any point has the distance, perpendicular distance x per that is identically equal to r. So the rotational inertia about this axis n of this hoop with radius r and mass m is just simply mr squared. The cm of the hoop is at the origin, all correct. And the, Rotation inertia about n hat is mr squared. Okay. Total angular momentum. We pre choose the center of mass to be fixed because it is the origin. We are at the center of mass frame. Angular momentum is just the in, you know, due to the internal motion only, and ICM multiplied by angular velocity. Then we have fixed the axis of rotation to be this, okay? Wait a second, we have ICM theta dot. Theta dot is okay, this is wrong. ICM is MR squared, it should be MR squared. See, the total angular momentum, right. Total kinetic energy, we have this, center of mass frame, CM is a fixed, so we do not have the first term and we have the only the internal kinetic energy. That internal kinetic energy is just a one half ICM theta that squared. And what is ICM? MR squared, one half MR squared theta that squared. Okay, next we consider a who with a uniform disk. Uniform disk. It should be written uniform disk, the disk. Okay. In that case, we have, you have to remember this value. And sometime I can ask you how to evaluate this uh, rotational inertia. The answer is given in the previous uh, lecture. And in comparison with the who, the average distance from the axis of rotation, this is uh, shorter than this because the who, every part has the distance r. But this is disk, some of them, this is maximum values R, but there are masses that is near than the radius R. So after integration, you will find we, we have factor of one half. 
this one is mr square axis rotation is the same and this is a one half mr square so using this one we keep the axis of rotation the same so n half the change is a factor of one half only everything is the same kinetic energy one half icm oh icm is one half mr squared this is wrong this is one fourth right one half and there is one half mr squared so one fourth mr squared so this is wrong right now we have to make use of the parallel axis theorem we have the axis that is this is parallel to the symmetry axis we remember icm is one half mr square and there is another axis this axis is a parallel to this axis and the distance is r then the i prime is icm plus mass distance square right so some of this i will find we will find three half 목소리가 안 들려 딴 사람도 안 들려 그안 들리는 사람은 잠깐 나갔다가 다시 들어오든지 어, 어. 오케이 여기 내가 마이크 이 저기 나타나 가지고 안 나오면 여기 그 불이 꺼져 그래서 자 그래서 three half mr squared is i prime that is the rotational inertia about this blue axis so once we have determined once we determine this uh, rotational inertia, everything is uh, straightforward. So I told you this is a one half mr squared, and the parallel axis theorem. We have mr squared. The sum is a three half of mr squared. Again, ICM. This is a. Uh, Actually, this this is uh, this should not be ICM. This 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 one should be I n hat, right? I have to write it for C ICM should be replaced with I n hat. So I n hat, this is wrong, this I n hat, and but the answer is right. And the angular velocity, axis of rotation. Next, we consider total kinetic energy. Okay. This one should also be replaced. This one should also be i n hat. So one half i n hat beta the square is the total kinetic energy. And actually, Wait a second, is the identical to total kinetic energy is every motion is described by the rotational motion of rotation about this axis. So in here we have to, uh, if we know the I prime, 
it is not expressed as uh, some of uh, I uh, taught her is where is it? If I know the rotational inertia about this I INT, that is the rotation. If you follow everything in here, this coordinate is a relative coordinate relative to the center of mass. So the rotational inertia, if you know the rotational inertia <coughs> about an axis that is passing through the center of mass, you have to add another contribution. But if you know the rotational inertia about the actual axis, here, this is the actual axis that is not passing the center of mass. If you knew to know the rotation of, of inertia about I n hat, you don't have to add this one because it is already included. Some of these you are computing by using I n hat instead of I c m. You have added these two components already. Okay, the parallel axis theorem does this summation automatically. So the answer is a one half, and then I in here this so one half times three half that is three quarter. We have a thin rod. Thin rod. You remember, uh, this is a way how to compute the rotational inertia of a thin rod about this axis. They said this is end point, and this uh, rod is uniform and perpendicular to the axis of rotation. And r squared dm dm mass mass element mass element. This is mass element mass element at radius r from from this axis of rotation so density this is the mass density mass divided by total length and differential of the coordinate so this one is the mass element this mass element multiply by x per squared x per x per is the this radius perpendicular distance square so what i have to do is a dm is this and capital m over r is constant i factor this out now the integral becomes a trivial integral one third capital r cube and r cancels so we have one third mr squared if you do the calculation about the center of mass center of mass this one this rotational inertia should be smaller than this because the distance distance from this axis of rotation is a uh, one half of r in here but half of this mass is far so one half hour and this is r so you do the calculation with r squared so this contribution is very large so we have uh, one third but the actual calculation of this contribution is uh, one twelfth mr squared it's uh, very small what happens to the case if you rotate about this axis? This is I equals zero because the R is a zero. So the same object, when it is rotated by different uh, axis of rotation, the rotational inertia varies. Now we know how to compute this. So 112 can be computed by making use of parallel axis theorem.
And anyway, using this one, we can compute the angular momentum and rotational kinetic energy. This is wrong. One half i theta dot squared, right? i is one third, one third mr squared, so we have to multiply one third mr squared, so one sixth instead of one third, right? Seven, a cylinder is rolling, <coughs> rolls on a horizontal plane without slipping. So there is a frictional force, but it is a rolling. So the frictional force does not reduce because of the, this static frictional force, the friction does not reduce the speed of this motion. So kinetic energy is conserved. If there is a kinetic friction, then the energy will be lost. It is difficult to problem. Anyway, center of mass translates with the same uniform speed, the uniform velocity. So there is uh, some constant, so xcm at time zero, it doesn't matter what we are interested in, the velocity and the kinetic energy. And, you know, this forward motion can be understood as a rotation about an axis that is parallel to the symmetry axis, but rotation about this point, D. So we have radius R as relative to the fixed point, it is slightly d theta, for example. We have radius r, this is a cm, and we have uh, distances r d theta, where d theta runs from zero. Then, this is actually tangent, tangent, so tangent to this. Uh, this circle. Therefore, the forward velocity is r d theta over dt. This is r theta dot it is the forward velocity of the center of mass. Okay, and we have E1 is here and E2 is here. So the center mass velocity is E2 direction. Velocity point A of point A, point A. Velocity at point A is relative to CM. Relative to CM is rotating downward, right? So we have a contribution of minus E1 direction. And you know, relative to CM, the rotational angular velocity theta that is fixed. Therefore, three, four points are rotating in this way. Okay? You understand? About the center of mass, they are rotating in this way. So you so this is R theta dot, R theta dot, R theta dot, R theta dot. Everything has the same magnitude, but direction can be chosen with E1 minus E1, E2 minus E2. However, relative to the ground, we have to add the center of mass motion. Center of mass motion was obtained in this way. So we, we add this contribution to here, then we have <coughs> This one, this one added the center of mass motion, center of mass motion, center of mass motion, center of mass motion. 
Okay, finally, we obtain bottom. This D point D doesn't move. It is a zero. Point C, it is moving in this way. Point B, it is going double. Center of mass, velocity is r theta dot, but top point is a two times r theta dot forward. And here is a going down in this way. Understood? So this answer can be rather this from this. The similar problem, so let me pass. Is it uh, measured at the center of mass? Again, this is an identical problem, but now we know how to compute the angular velocity. We substitute the angular velocity to obtain the orbital angular momentum and total kinetic energy. You know, this uh, cylinder has the same same ICM, that is the one half MR squared ICM. If I want to compute this in terms of the motion with respect to the center of mass, I need to use ICM, I one half ICM theta dot squared plus one half M XCM dot squared in this way. Or if I know the, the rotational inertia about the D axis uh, parallel to this by passing through the, the end point uh, on the bottom, in that case, I directly compute I prime and theta dot square. So these two are the same. And this I prime is uh, related by the parallel axis of serum, I prime, I prime equals ICM plus one half MR squared because this the center of mass and point D has the distance R. So there are two ways to, to compute the uh, kinetic energy. Okay, next problem. The same situation axis rotation is given in here. Now we have chosen the axis of rotation that is passing the center of mass. In that case, we have to write the total kinetic energy as the sum of the rotational kinetic energy and the translational kinetic energy. And we have a very important constraint. Velocity of center of mass is r theta dot that we just derived. Using this, I can substitute this r theta dot in here. So it is translation of kinetic energy is like that. If you combine, we have a mass m is missing in here as is written in here. Then the sum of these two, the rotational kinetic energy relative to about this axis that is passing the center of mass is one half ICM and theta that squared. ICM is one half MR squared. So sum of these and these is three quarters. Again, the same problem. Okay. Angular velocity is ABCD measured from the center. Angular velocity, ABCD, they are all equal. This is a uniform circular motion. Generalized version of a Galilean relativity to rotation can be constructed to find that the angular velocity of the center, angular velocity of center, measured at D because, because D is rotating about the CM in this way. Galilean relativity means 
if I look at the center of mass, because it is moving in this way, the center of mass must be moving with the segment, same magnitude, but opposite direction. That is Galilean relativity. Relative motion of two particles is measured by A and B is same in magnitude. For example, it is moving forward with B, then 2A, B is moving minus V. This is Galilean relativity. And this is true for Einstein's relativity too. C, the angular velocity of the center with respect to D is same as theta dot, it is trivial problem. And I prime can be computed using parallel axis theorem and get that is consistent with the result what we have obtained to compute the total kinetic energy to be the sum of the translational kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy of our axis that is passing through the center of mass. 12. Now that cylinder is rolling down a slope without slipping. Okay, let's see. Gravitational potential energy will eventually transform into total kinetic energy of cylinder when it reaches the bottom. Rolls down. It's a speed of the center of mass increases and angular velocity also increases. So if we use, well, what we need is two equations. One equation is F equals MA and the other equation is a torque equation, tau equals I alpha and F equals MA. However, using these equation is a more complicated than by making use of the energy conservation that the Newton didn't know. So what we prefer to Newton's way is to consider the energy conservation you know, rather than there is a complicated equation, couple of equations of motion. So no more force is always acting toward the center of the cylinder. Hence, the normal force does not contribute to the torque. Normal force is from the point touching this point. Normal force is along this direction. And if we consider the center of mass, is uh, this normal force is uh, passing through the center of mass, it does not contribute to the torque. In order to contribute to a torque, if there is a center of mass, for example, if I pull down with uh, some force, and here R cross F will give the torque along this direction. That results in the acceleration, angular acceleration of this uh, rigid body. The friction increased the kinetic energy of the cylinder through its torque, not through force because there is no relative motion at the contact point. Contact point, the, you will find the gravity, gravity also contribute to the torque, however, this contribution is always mg. mg is acting on the center of mass. Therefore, this uh, mg does not contribute the torque. So normal force does not contribute to the torque and the gravitational force does not contribute to, to the torque. Then remaining piece is the frictional force that is not kinetic frictional force, but static frictional force. Because it is a rolling down, it is a rolling down in this way, the only way to apply the torque due to the frictional force is 
this direction. Only if it is applied to this direction, frictional force, it is making, for example, you have, you have a, a string in here and you pull in along this direction. Then you fix the, uh, fix the center of mass along an axis. Then you pull this object, then it rotates and it accelerates just like that because it is rolling down the only force that is the frictional force that contribute to the torque, the, the, that torque must be going upward. Very important. 13, the cylinder of mass in the same situation. Now we would like to solve some mechanical problem. Total kinetic energy of the cylinder. How can I compute? We know how to compute right total kinetic energy but total kinetic energy is like that and then how can i compute the cylinder rolling down a slope acquires kinetic energy by mg delta h this is the total kinetic energy that total kinetic energy is coming from the gravitational potential energy if there is a height delta H, so this mg, uh, capital M, mg delta H, it will be transformed into this kinetic energy change. This is the initial angular velocity, and this is a final angular velocity. This is just coming from, uh, it's from the work kinetic energy theorem. You know, delta H, what is delta H? And here, this is R and we have angle, for example, let's fix this axis, then you measure the angle of rotation. Then you remember about the center of mass, if it's uh, rolling this direction, the center of mass goes forward with our theta dot, right? Just like that, it is when it, when it slides down and when it rolls down, it's the center of mass velocity will be r theta dot. That means the distance of travel is distance of travel along the slope should be r theta, right? That r theta multiplied by psi, this is r theta and this is h. h should be r theta psi right now we have substituted mg r theta psi psi mg r theta sine psi equals three quarter mr squared theta dot squared minus theta dot zero squared. We take the derivative with respect to time, then this one becomes a theta dot and this one disappears and this one will be two theta dot theta dot dot, right? And we cancel this uh, theta dot, and this one is uh, now 3 half. So 3 half mr squared theta double dot, and left hand side theta dot has been canceled, and mgr sine psi. So this is the equation of motion that we have obtained angular acceleration, not by making use of Newton's laws of motion but making use of 
total mechanical energy conservation. That is much simpler. So we can write it in this way with a torque. How can I compute the torque? We, 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 we have this one, theta dot, a theta dot dot, that is alpha, angular acceleration, multiplied by I should be torque, okay? And what is I? We remember, what is I? This is I. This is I. Three half m r square is I. So this is I. I alpha should be torque. Therefore, this torque is the left hand side. Okay. And this is the axis of rotation and head in it here. We compare the motion of the two objects with the same radius. One is a hollow, just an empty inside. It is a uniformly filled with mass. What will go down faster? We make use of energy conservation too. Anyway, it's better now because we know the equation of motion and this one should be replaced with the rotational inertia and this part left hand side should be the same because the geometry of two objects are the same. Therefore, if we compare these two, oh, this is small m, large m. The capital M, small m. And right inside, we have I in here. What is this? This one has ICM is small m r squared. And we rotate about this bottom point. We can make use of parallel axis theorem, is ICM plus mr squared. So because this is mr squared, the sum is a 2 mr squared. The left hand side, the scaling factor mass is uh, different. However, this m m cancels and the small m small m cancels. The remaining piece we will find we have two different overall factor. r squared is the same, this is the same, but this over factor is different. So this factor appears in the denominator and this factor is reversed, reciprocal. Therefore, what is bigger? Acceleration of this one is bigger than this one. So it looks, it looks lighter and empty However, what's going down first? This one goes faster. The reason is that this one has a larger, larger eye. This eye is a big. So if I is a big, it requires a more energy to rotate. Okay, it requires more energy to rotate. So it takes longer time. This is a striking difference what we learned until now for the point particle behavior. And this rigid body motion, uh, this problem is an exemplary problem that shows the effect of rotational kinetic energy explicitly. Now we consider the pendulum. Stand in this case, discover radius r, mass capital M, 
oscillating on the plane perpendicular axis. This is axis of rotation and theta from some angle theta zero and it oscillates. This is a pendulum, which is the angle between, theta is the angle between the vertical line and this line. All right. So first, center mass is in here, disk about this axis that is a parallel to this, about this axis is a one half mr square. Memorize this. And if I want to compute the, this rotational inertia about the parallel axis, then what we have to do is add this one to m perpendicular distance squared, ml squared. So resultant rotational inertia about this uh, axis of rotation is this. The tension does not contribute to the torque for the rotation about n hat because the lever arm vector but the tension vanishes. Sure, this x center it is passing the center of mass. Only the gravity. Gravity is a passing the center of mass of this object, but we have this is n hat and this is cm gravitation is mg and we have a perpendicular distance a level arm x of perp is not vanishing so origin of the this uh, torque is due to the gravitational force applied to the center of mass of this sixteen, the same problem. Now we construct the torque formula. Torque is R cross F. This force is down, Mg is going down, and torque got uh, this Mg and L, right? You will find the direction in, in, in three-dimensional figure. Dimension is uh, going into the paper, into the paper. That means if the direction is going out of the paper, in that case, the torque is in this way. That is unreasonable. The torque, the torque is uh, toward the vertical direction. If it goes in this direction, torque in this direction, then torque is shrinking the angle, shrinking the angle. So, so the torque is now acting as a restoring force to the direction at theta equals zero. So if you do the calculation, substitute everything in here, tau is the angular momentum's a time derivative. And angular momentum is I theta. Angular momentum is a I theta dot and head, right? So we take the so oh, we we have i in here. We obtain this one i prime and theta dot time derivative of angular momentum is i i theta double dot. So m uh, this is i and theta double dot becomes this. And if you move this right in uh, this term to the left hand side and take the limit theta is a small you know theta is approximate can be approximate in this way so if theta is a very small 
this one will dominantly contribute and this equation becomes the equation of what simple harmonic oscillator now the effect of the radius of this above radius when r goes to zero this expression becomes a theta dot plus a g over l theta equals zero Okay, 17. Again, same problem, but now we make use of the total mechanical energy conservation. When we use the total mechanical energy conservation, you know how to compute the total kinetic energy. Now we substitute the potential energy. The reference point is given in here. Let me choose the potential energy to be zero at here. In that case, go, you go down and how much this one is L cosine theta. So the gravitational potential energy at this point is smaller than this point by L cosine theta. So mg L cosine theta negative sign on it. That is the potential energy of this bar when it is at an angle of theta relative to the vertical direction. So we know how to compute, uh, we know the total mechanical energy is the sum of the total kinetic energy and the potential energy. Some of them is, must be constant. Why don't we take the time derivative of both sides, whatever constant it may be, it will, it will disappear if I take the time derivative. It is uh, exactly zero. And minus cosine becomes a plus a sine. And left hand side become, this is we have a theta that squared. Time derivative should be two times theta dot, theta double dot. And you know, cosine theta dt, your chain rule minus sine theta multiplied by theta dot. This theta dot and this theta dot disappears. They cancel and we have factor of two cancel this one half factor. So we have, we ended, uh, the, we finally obtained this equation that is identical to what we have obtained by making use of Newton's laws of motion. And you have found that the energy conservation is much easier to use. 18. <clears throat> Again, the same problem. But we have an inelastic collision. There's a bullet. Initial state of this pendulum was at rest. And the bullet is coming incident and they merge together immediately and then it rises up the reason is that the this initial linear momentum is transferred to the final linear momentum of m plus m with the center of mass when they are combined together. This is a completely inelastic collision, so we have lost some energy. However, the momentum conservation is independent of the fact of whether it is elastic collision or inelastic collision. So the the velocity of the center of mass is this composite system after the collision is exactly known, although it is a completely inelastic collision. Because of that, the initial kinetic energy of the system is can be expressed in this way. And we substitute this value to find that it is expressed in terms of the velocity of the original the incident bullet. 
again, during this process, what we have this angular momentum. Angular momentum is the motion of this uh, composite object or this one only, because this one did not have any angular momentum. Initial angular momentum is just perpendicular distance multiplied by the linear momentum mv. That is that is this. And the theta dot, theta dot, when we consider the theta dot right after collision, then we have to consider this problem to consider the motion of the composite particle, not a single bullet, but they combine together and they rotate simultaneously. Okay, angular momentum decreases right after the collision. You know, the angular momentum, even though energy may be lost due to the friction, the internal, internal torque that is the central does not contribute the change in the angular momentum. That is the linear momentum conservation and angular momentum conservation in a system of particles. Because there is no external force, the total linear momentum and total angular momentum must be conserved. Decreases right after collision, that's wrong. 19. Now, this one is to use the, the total mechanical energy conservation again, and that is exactly the same as what we have done in here. So I don't want to repeat the calculation, and this, this is just a substitute the, the combined system I have replaced the total mass in here and substitute the kinetic energy that we have obtained in this formula and substitute it and reorganize the expressions. And what is the question? The angle theta at which the bob stops. That one is uh, simply solving this problem. Okay, so that's it for today.